this is so explain exactly what am I looking at so this is me two months ago okay I've been working out for two years prior to this everybody telling me dude you look sick you look good right, I right. sit down I feel like shit I got guts hanging out you got to have a balance of performance and also adorn your mind you know what exactly, I mean? exactly. I'm, I'm trying to bear myself in every way possible pull up the other picture he's been eating once a day this is him before you know people are like oh yeah you swole you know what I mean but look what you a lot of body fat lot, and, a lot and and when you see it you know that you have a lot of visceral fat a lot of fat surrounding your organs that's not healthy now look at the, the new the new the new and improved look at him still got his gains you can see his delts capped out more chest abs more defined now once a day still working exactly strength same exactly the same exactly man i'm going to i'm not even eating when i go to the gym I'm still, that's I'm that's still. how you do it listen you go to the gym that's that's you that's you going on your hunt you, you conquer everything at the gym then you go eat that's you, you that's your reward you get tired look i wake up at six every morning i go to right. I, i'm in university i'm studying criminology there you go i finish that i go to i go right, to the gym right 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 i go it is, work there's so many studies that show how the fewer calories we eat, the more efficient our brain works. In class, you know I'm, I'm focused, man. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm, I'm, so, y'all didn't hear his question. He wants to be a police officer. And what's my take on, you know, strength training and, and whatnot for that? I'm, I'm a huge advocate of whatever you do being the absolute best version of that. And, and law enforcement. I got a lot of uh, friends that are in law enforcement. I actually just signed my training partner, Big Tony, is, is a cop. I just signed a guy who's a law, uh, he's a SWAT uh, member. I just signed him to gift it. Um, and these guys are in shape. I always say, get, like, when you're a cop, I feel comfortable with jacked cops walking the streets because they're going to keep us safe, right? They're most likely, they're in shape. They look good. They feel good. Instead of a situation to where somebody runs from them, they turn around and shoot them, they'll chase them down and whoop that ass. You know what I mean? You're not killing nobody. You know what I mean? When you don't have to. I always say be the ultimate example of whatever you do. So to be a law enforcement officer, you need to qualify yourself. Listen, not just physically, but mentally as well. You might be in situations where you're dealing with people from a different culture that you're not familiar with. And it's normal to profile. People talk about racial profiling, this, that, and the third. I don't see nothing wrong with that. It's how you act on it. Because people being like profiling other people, that's a sign of intelligence out of fear. Humans have evolved this far along because we do experience fear and we learn patterns and we learn, well, this person usually does this in this situation. So let me avoid that to stay alive. So, you know, but trying to have a little bit of cultural sensitivity, you understand? And, you know, and really, like, you guys' job is to protect and serve. So really to protect and serve. You guys are public servants. You know, you live a life of service. And that's a very, very important, like, you know, uh, law enforcement, they have a more difficult job than guys in the military, like guys overseas. Because you guys are in imminent danger every night. Unless you're, like, guarding Disneyland or something like that. And then the, the Donald Duck might act up. Who knows? It's, you can probably take him easy. But anyway, so you want to be well-rounded going into it, calm. So I always recommend, of course, your strength training. Get out there and run, hit hills, uh, sand sprints, stuff like that. Because you got to think, there's going to be situations where you gotta, you're going to have gear on. You might have to chase somebody. You can't be like, hold up, I'm tired. His adrenaline is going, so he's fucking running. He's probably on meth. So he, he don't get tired, right? You got to not get tired too. And not only do you have to catch that guy, but you got to beat that ass when you catch him. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I used to train a lot of uh, California Highway Patrolmen back in California. And it was, it was uh, close quarter combat training, right? From my, my background. So, but what I would do was I would put them through Metcon workouts, metabolic conditioning, tire them out, and then we have to do combat because that's a real life situation. And they had to come to the gym in utes and boots, not gym clothes, because you're not gonna be out on the field in comfortable gym shorts. So train yourself like that, go do your yard, uh, your, 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 your running and stuff like that, 
with boots on. I'm serious. This is stuff that I've done. My dad, since I was a boxer, my dad had me jogging since I was 12. And he had me jogging with boots on. I was used to that, you know what I'm saying? Because when you have on regular shoes, it's that much easier. So make your training a lot more difficult than how you're going to have to play or perform or, or work. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're doing stuff on the field, it's easy. Everybody wants, whether it be law enforcement, whether it be military, just in life period, everybody want a legit battle buddy. They want, you want to be that guy that everybody wants in the car with them. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be that guy that like, nah, I'll go by myself. It's cool. Or give me her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to be that ultimate guy out there. When they see you, the bad guys, you invoke fear and respect. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to go out there and be a tough guy to them. You know, these are people, innocent until proven guilty. You know what I mean? But you got to be firm. And, you know, if you grab that arm, they got to feel like, oh, shit, this guy. Let me act right. You know what I'm saying? It make your job a lot easier. Good question. Oh, but learn a fighting system if you don't already know one. You know what I'm saying? You got to. My goal is longevity. My goal is to, you know, look decent in my clothes. You know what I mean? And to be strong and to be able to run when I need to run. Because um, I had gotten bigger before and it was, it was miserable. You know, walking up the stairs, I would get tired. Having sex, I would have to take breaks. Like, hold on, man. I can't breathe. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, fatigue brings the coward out of everybody. You know what I mean? So that's something that, you know, just walking around with that much mass on, I don't care how much muscle it is, it's still extra mass. Your lungs don't grow, your heart don't grow, your organs don't grow, and if they do, that's not good. So, you know, I want to be, you know, I don't, you know, I want to live a graceful life. You know what I'm saying? The years that I'm on earth, you know, one more year or 100 more years, I want it to be easy. I don't want it to be like, I'm sick, I'm tired, I can't carry groceries, I'm getting a pump from carrying groceries, you know? I've been there before, and it's not, not fun. You know, people look at you like, you look at a lot of strong looking people that can't do a lot of functional things. You're like, but you work out, what's wrong with you? But it's just too much muscle, you know what I mean? It hurts to carry the groceries. You get a pump in your back just from standing there. I've been there before, and it's not fun, you know? So that's why, that's why I do, you know, and my first love in any kind of like athletics was boxing. So when I got to a point where I was too big to throw punches properly, I'm like, nah, that's not cool. Let me come back down and find a balance of muscularity and athleticism for overall functionality. Do you consider bodybuilding a sport or a hobby? Uh, I, I think it's both for, you know, the actual, what you're doing it for. Now, for the people that are competing, that are, you know, have earned their pro cards and they're competing in a pro arena, even people that's trying to get to that point, I do think it's a sport because it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of self-control, um, you know, it takes a lot of work. And uh, I remember I was at Mr. Olympia, I don't know, I've been there the past five, six years, and I remember somebody looking at, maybe it was before the Olympia, and somebody, no, somebody posted a picture saying, you know, I think it was like Branch Warren saying, I bet he can't do a 100-yard sprint or whatever, and I'm like, I don't want to see Branch Lewis do a 100-yard sprint. I want to be terrified when he do a most muscular. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's apples and oranges. He's not a track star. You know what I mean? It's a different For athlete. bodybuilding, no, I may not have the desire to be 270 shredded, but when I go to the Olympia, I do want to see, you know, I want to see Kai Green yeah. look like a fucking monster. I want to be fucking like, look at that. You want to be blown away. You don't want to see, I don't want to see somebody that I'm like, oh, I can do that. Because it's not special to me no more. It's not, that's, that's, that's too easily attainable. I don't know if any of you guys ever did any kind of martial arts or whatever, but me, before I started boxing, when I was a kid, I used to get in fights all the time. When I started boxing, I never got into fights because I had an outlet. I had a, you know, you have energy, you have testosterone, you have all of this driving, you, you have an outlet, a progressive positive outlet in a proper arena to get it off, you know what I'm saying? When you don't have that, sometimes people act out for no reason. That's why any of y'all pet owners, dog owners or whatever, you gotta go run your dog, run that energy off. If not, they're gonna eat your couch, you know what I mean? And your favorite shoes or whatever. So you gotta, like, it's the same with us. We gotta exercise, we gotta 
move the body and just be active. Talk about being like ultimate alpha warrior, and I mean, I, I don't know why nobody would want to do Talk that. Better. So, how do you go about doing that without stepping the boundary of being too confident and being cocky and arrogant about yourself? Uh, yeah. It's a fine line you're treading on, right? That's a good question. The word alpha is just a letter A in the Greek alphabet. Is the We use it as a leader, you know, um, a first responder, like what you do for an occupation. So it's like you want to lead, my opinion, what I feel like people should, the way people should lead. You want to lead with love. You want to lead with peace, with compassion, with empathy, right? You want to be a strong leader. Because you, if you're not strong, people are not going to be confident enough to follow you. So if you don't have that kind of confidence and that kind of strength, they're not going to be comfortable with you being their leader, right? It's okay to follow, okay? It's a, people, we live in a culture nowadays when, you know, you, people who are successful in business or whatnot have platforms to really show it. And yo, I'm a boss, I'm a leader, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur or whatever. So what, <laughs> you know? There's no entrepreneurs without workers, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we need followers. And really, the people who really start, the brave people who really get movements going is like the first and the second people to follow. Not that initial leader. That initial leader, that first person is just crazy, right? And they just starting something new. Like, I don't care, I'm gonna just do this. The brave one is like, you know what? I like that, who can own that. I like what he's doing. I'm confident enough to, to trust this guy or this woman, and I'm going to follow them. And then that's when everybody else is like, okay, that is a, that is a good idea. I'm going to go too. So just respect who you follow, right, if you are to follow somebody. And you can't be a leader if you, don't, if you can't be a good follower, right? Loyalty, you know, subordinates, all of that stuff. These are, le these are life lessons that we all going to learn at some point. You know what I mean? I've done it. You know, I still play subordinate. I still like when certain people that I love and that I respect, I'm I'm, I'm number two to them, and I humbly accept that. I I have no problem with that. You know, CT Fletcher is one of them. That's that's pops. So like okay, pops. You know, and 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 it, in our circle, if somebody's wrong, we'll deal with that behind closed doors. It's not. Oh no, you don't do that. That's not alpha. That's not what leaders do. That's not loyalty. That's not respect. That's not you know. So, you know, it's, life is very dynamic, man. Uh, being a leader, being alpha, you know, you have a certain perception of what that is, but the real way to lead, the real way to be an alpha is to, to really be that, that warrior that you're asking me about is to be a person of peace, a person of love, a person of empathy, understanding what other people are, are dealing with and going through is not just about you. You're not important. I'm not important. You know what I'm saying? All collectively, we're all good. We're all important. You know what I'm saying? Because we're all like pieces of sand. We're, we're like dots on a dot. Because the earth is just a dot in a big scheme of things. You know what I mean? We could be wiped out real easy. You know what I mean? So, you know, we can't take ourselves too serious. Like we're just better than other people or we're more powerful. And we're not. We're nothing. Think about this. I mean, I love like wildlife and animals and I watch documentaries all the time. And oftentimes I'm like, man, I'm looking at like lions or tigers or elephants, these majestic, beautiful, powerful creatures. I'm like, if you ever look at a tiger, what's, what's more beautiful than a tiger? And not just is it beautiful, it's so strong, so powerful. Or a dolphin to, you, you know, when we, you ever have a dream that you're underwater trying to f throw punches? It's like, like, I'm so weak. It's like a nightmare to me. But look at how fast dolphins move through water so effortless and easy, or a seal. We are nothing, <laughs> like humans, in the big scheme of things, right? We, we do our cardio, we gotta lift weights, try to be strong. A gorilla will come and just toss us across the room, never done a workout in his life, you know what I'm saying? So we do a lot, we put a lot of effort into trying to be strong and, you know, present ourselves in a certain way and we stop working out or doing whatever we're doing for two, three months, it's gone. They don't do anything. These animals are beautiful and powerful the way that they are. You know what I'm saying? But we have this thing up here. We have intelligence. We have self-awareness. We have empathy. We have compassion. 
And that's something that we got to really tap into and activate. And that's what makes you really an alpha warrior, a, a real leader, a powerful entity. You know what I'm saying? When you can use your brain, use your mind. Uh, the story in the Bible about uh, King Solomon is an amazing story because when all the kings was getting their blessings from God, everybody wanted power, money, riches. Solomon was like, give me wisdom. So with wisdom, you can have everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's the real, that's the major key <laughs> with being that alpha warrior or, 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 or leader. You know what I mean? It's not tough guy shit at all.